Bam, welcome back to another video. Um, got an exciting video for you today uh, where we get to install some of the first mods onto the Mark II. And as the title of the video says, it's getting a turbo back Varex remote control exhaust. So before we jump into things, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the plans for the car. So I was actually waiting for a few months before I bought anything because I wasn't sure if I actually wanted to mod this car. I know that sounds crazy, but it's kind of like, well, do I spend money on this car or do I just put money into the Sora? Um, but I decided having a boring daily is boring. So I'm not going to go all out with mods on this car. Um, I basically just want it to sound good and look good or at least decent for both of those categories. Um, so probably just your basic ones like exhaust, a lower it, put some wheels on and maybe a body kit, but that's probably about it. Okay, so the first mods are going to be the exhaust. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a off the shelf slash custom job. Um, I've bought a dump pipe uh, from a guy called Kurt. He's been making dump pipes for Jay-Z cars for a very, very long time. Um, I've got one of his dump pipes on my Sora um, and a mate of mine's got one on his Chaser. Okay, so this is the new Kurt's dump pipe. Um, it's a three and a half slash four inch, depending on which way you look at it, reducing down to a three inch. Um, and then I did get him to put a um, three-inch high-flow cat into it. So um, that's just for uh, legal reasons, I guess, um, being a daily drive and living in Victoria. Um, you know, the fines can be pretty big if you don't have a cat. Um, so like I said before, Kurt makes these for um, pretty much any car that came with the Jay-Z. So Supras, Aristos, Sauras, Chasers, um, Mark IIs. You know, if it had a 1J, he's made a dump for it or a 2J. Um, so that's what I'm going to be installing now. I'm going to be removing the stock one. Um, I'll show you some size comparisons so you can see how much extra flow, especially right off the back of the turbo, how much extra room it has. Um, and something interesting that I'll be keen to find out at least once the full exhaust is on is um, the difference that the dump makes because on, I've heard different things between the non-VVTI and the VVTI dumps. I know on the Sora that, um, uh, that the dump actually makes it a little bit laggier, but you pick up way more top-end power, um, which kind of makes it feel spicy. Whereas on the VVTI engines, uh, my mate who has one on his chaser says it picked up, it got less laggy, so the turbo spooled a lot faster, but it didn't make as much power as uh, what, what the non-VVTI dump has. Uh, so yeah, I'll be interested to see that. Um, anyway, let's get to it. I'm gonna jack up the car and start removing the stock dump. Okay, so the process is actually pretty simple, uh, at least in theory. It's remove the exhaust, and then remove the catalytic converter, and then remove the right angle piece, I don't know if I'll be able to show it, up there that comes off the back of the turbo. Uh, so there's only 10 bolts that need to get removed, and we only need to put 7 back in. So it should be an easy job, but with all these things, like reaching the bolts, getting sockets on them and if any of them are seized up you know this can take longer than expected. Yeah, so just going to try and lube everything up to make it a little easier because I can tell some of these are going to be crusty. You can see if I pass this um, heater hose, there's like a little shroud shield thing. That's where the O2 sensor bolts in, so I have to remove that. And you can see one of the bolts uh, just under, just under there, uh, which is from the uh, turbo. Okay, so I've taken the O2 sensor off from the top. Um, one of those bolts was a little tight, but not too bad. These ones seem to be pretty tight there, so. Got the old breaker out and give it a go. <sighs> Almost seems like uh, the 14 is slightly too big, but I couldn't get the 13 on. It's a bit weird. Okay, so I think the first problem, which is basically one of these bolts on the exhaust is was a 14, but it's now 
kind of just rust it away so it's slightly smaller than a 14. So a 14, if you put too much force, will just spin and I'll end up just rounding it off if I keep trying. But it's still too big to put a 13 on. So uh, it's a bit annoying. Um, I've put some more WD on. I'm going to try a shifter now and see if that will get it to budge. Otherwise, I might have to get some extractors or some vice grips or something like that. But I did get the other one off. So they are definitely 14s. It's just this one on the driver's side, which is quite annoying. I give up. Okay, so quick update. Uh, after trying a few different things, I decided I'm just going to go ahead and buy a um, extractor set. So that's what I've done. Hopefully this just goes on and it just comes off and it's all good. Also bought some new bolts. Um, pretty expensive, but uh, it was at the same store as the extractors, so I just bought them. Okay, so it looks like it's works and it's going to stick. Um, I just need some more leverage because this is my 3 8 inch ratchet and it's uh, just not long enough to get the proper leverage to undo this. Okay, so I've got like this little adapter piece here. Um, I don't know how strong it is, so it may break, it may not, but it should allow me to fit this on here and the breaker bar on there and hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get this bolt undone. Exhaust off. And there it is. No wonder the stock exhaust is so quiet. It's got three mufflers getting progressively bigger and this one on the end is massive. Also not really sure what these things are. They look kind of like rubber stoppers but I think maybe they're designed to eliminate kind of resonance and drone. Maybe absorb some vibration. Not entirely sure. Okay so back under here we have the stock cat and it just runs up. Don't know if I'll be able to show it. It's a bit blurry up there, but up there there's another flange with three bolts and that's what I have to take off next. Uh, so I probably won't film this next part uh, for you guys to kind of get a good view and see anything. Uh, I have to put the camera pretty much exactly where I'm lying, so um, yeah, I'll just cut to when it's done. Uh, okay, update. It's uh, been a couple of hours actually, so I know I said that uh, yeah, I'll cut to this when I've got it off, but the problem was the bolts were so rusted, I barely put any pressure on them uh, and it just stripped straight away. So... So underneath here, those three you see there holding the cat on, uh, completely stripped. I don't know how to get them off, but uh, I've now taken the long route. So by long route, I mean I've removed all the intake stuff. Uh, so I know I said I didn't want to do that, but J-pipe's all gone. Uh, so the turbo's just sitting here and I can reach, I should be able to reach all the bolts um, on the back of the turbo here. It's interesting to note this manifold, this stock manifold, look how small it is and how small the turbo is too. So you can see how uh, people get such good gains from going aftermarket manifold with a uh, much bigger turbo. So you can see uh, I've cracked that one, that one, and the one below that one. So I've just got one more underneath the manifold and one on the bottom side of that side of the, um, the turbo. And then once those are all cracked, I can undo them and the whole dump pipe should drop off. At least that's the plan. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, it's off, finally. Um, took a very long time to get that last nut off because it had to come from the bottom and I couldn't get a socket on it so I had to use uh, a ratchet doing about an eighth of a turn at a time. So that last nut literally took about 20 minutes. But you can see here uh, the difference in size. Um, it's particularly coming right off the turbo, this is significantly bigger, whereas this is such a restriction through here. Uh, it's a bigger section through here as well. Uh, and then the high flow cat is actually smaller because it doesn't have all of this uh, wrapping and stuff over it. And you can see here as well on the other side, this has like a weird kind of lip, whereas this is a much smoother flow. So even though the openings are the same size, um, this dump pipe should flow a lot more air than this stock one. And you can see here, um, stripped. Barely took any force to strip those, very annoying. So just putting it, the new one on, uh, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of grease on uh, these nuts and bolts. Um, I understand that this grease is probably going to break down at high temperature anyway, but whatever. Because this uh, dump pipe is one piece and doesn't have the flange for the cat, it's so much easier to put these bolts on, let me tell you. Okay, so I managed to get uh, that little bracket behind where it needs to go, like you can see there. Um, one of the issues I've got now is the actual studs that hold the, um, on the turp, at the turbo end, that hold it on. Um, the flange is actually thinner, so I'm going to need a couple of washers probably, uh, just to pack that out so that I can actually tighten it up. So I've got the dump sitting in here uh, and basically I've got all of the bolts kind of loosely done up finger tight. I've had to add some washers just because the flange is thinner um, but they don't fit that well especially the ones on the bottom because of where the the bead sits of the wells they don't sit flat so I'm gonna have to try and get some skinnier washers um, from probably Bunnings but it's a little late in the day today so I think I might call it there today um, didn't get nearly as much done today as I wanted to, um, but that's all right. I'll uh, get started on this again tomorrow. Uh, actually, after second thought, what I'm going to do is just grind it down rather than buying new washers. Um, I've got a grinder here, so it means I can probably finish this tonight, maybe, and yeah, just grind it down to fit. Uh, okay, so the dump pipe is on. Everything's tightened right up, as you can see just in here. Um, not sure how the washers will do. I guess we'll, we'll have to see um, when we first start it up. I'll have a listen for exhaust leaks and all that kind of stuff. Um, so now it's basically trying to remember how all of this went back together and put it back in here. And that should be, that should be it for the dump. Okay, so the sun's starting to set um, and got all of this back in. Hopefully there's no bolts left over, so hopefully it's all good and ready to go. Um, the dump's all connected, the O2 pipe's connected, so the car should run right now um, and should idle fine. So I might start it up with the exhaust off just to see how loud it is.
Okay, so it's just the exhaust going back on and then it's, uh, it's all done. Just gotta get one of these things on and then it should just hold the weight. Why are exhausts so heavy? I need to go titanium from now on. I'm sick of this with steel exhaust. There we go. And done. Uh, so that's basically it for today. Um, the car's now good to go and driving. Um, the next part of the video is the actual muffler, the remote control muffler, the valves one from Barracks. Um, I'm still waiting for the controller and wiring to arrive, so probably won't get around to that till next weekend. Um, but then after I do that, I'll probably tap into something in the boot, or if there's nothing there, I'll run some wire, obviously. Uh, then after that, I just have to book it into uh, my local exhaust shop and he'll connect it all with a bit of three inch pipe and it'll be good to go. Okay, so it's the next weekend and we're ready to move on with the next step of the exhaust for the Mark II. Um, so some more parts have arrived during the week, so I'm gonna show you them now. Okay, so we have the muffler and the control kit. I'm going with a Varix remote control valved muffler. Uh, so this lets you choose from valve fully closed, valve fully open, and I think there's four or five positions in between. Um, so one of the reasons why I went with the Varix is because because it's a 1J, I want it to be loud and have fun when I want it to have fun, but because it's a daily, I can definitely see the advantage of having something quiet to start up in the morning, and you know, when I'm sitting in bumper to bumper traffic, I also don't want something that's just droning into my earballs. So being able to quieten it down for trips to work is good, and then every other trip have it fully open or in between, whatever I want, I think is worth, uh, worth the extra cost of this muffler. And this is the control kit that uh, you have to buy separately. I found that out. I thought it came with the muffler when you buy it, but it doesn't, you have to buy this separately. Um, just a wiring loom, essentially. Uh, this plugs into the muffler. This is your 12 volt power supply. I'm probably gonna cut this 12 volt socket out and just wire it directly. Your little controller, which plugs in with this cable, and then your two remotes here, which have your A and B for close open. Uh, one thing I will say, this little control box feels really like cheaply made, like cheap plastic, feels like it will break really easily. I'm guessing it's because the board inside is actually really small and it's just like a lot of empty housing, but if it works I guess it is what it is. So just having a look inside the muffler, don't know if you'll be able to see that properly, but you can see the valve in there and when you press it, that's the hidden motor uh, under the plate here and that simply closes it and forces it around and don't know if you'll be able to see Probably can't see in there, but there's like a little hole for it to come back out. But essentially, it goes through all of this extra muffled part here. Uh, so basically, the last part that I'm going to be doing myself and what I'm going to be doing today is the wiring. So I'm thinking about trying to find a plus 12 volt in the boot somewhere. Um, don't know if I'm going to find one and then tapping directly into that and then fitting it down uh, ready to go. Okay, so we're in the boot and I don't know exactly where we're going to get the wiring from. I can see there's a little bit of wiring limb here. I'm guessing that goes to the brake light. Probably don't want to tap into that. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe this air purifier box here probably gets a 12 volt signal from one of those wires. So I might tap into one of those. I'll see if I can find out if any of those are plus 12 volts. It may mean that I have to turn the air purifier on every time I want to use the remotes, but that's probably not the end of the world. Okay, so essentially I have the key in the on position and um, I've got the air purifier switched on auto and I'm just going to test these pins and basically I'm going to guess it's this red and black and probably this black wire and yep, there we go, 12 volts. Uh, so that answers my question. I can tap into those two wires and hopefully that's enough current to power uh, the actuator. Okay, so the first step is basically cut these wires, strip them back uh, so the cop is exposed and then do the same on the plug and then basically twist them together for now and just plug everything in and see if it actually works. Okay, so it's fully open. 
Okay, hit something and then nothing. And it blew that fuse. Uh, that's kind of annoying because that basically means this thing pulls more than three amps uh, and I'm gonna have to think of a new way to do this. Okay, so I'm just running a test now. Um, I'm in the front of the car, I've got it plugged into uh, the 12 volt socket there and I've got it hooked up to an ammeter down here. So if I put this in, just have to be careful those two wires don't touch. But I've got power, let me just turn the radio off. Okay, so I got power, and we're drawing zero, basically zero amps at the moment. So, just testing now. Okay, it works. And you've got, it's fully variable depending on how long you hold the button for. Okay, so let's have a look at the amp. So it's closed and I'm just gonna open. Okay, so you can see it's drawing over five amps. I'm still holding the button down and the motor's trying to push against the thing. So that's that's when it's gonna be drawing the most current. So it's about five amps. That's why I cooked the three amp thing. But when I close it, you can see it drew about, about two amps, three amps. So. Whilst it's actually opening and closing, it's only drawing about 3 amps. And then once you hit the max and keep holding it down, it draws about 5. Okay, uh, so it's a new day. It's still kind of cloudy, uh, but it's not raining. So, um, so I've actually been to Bunnings and they actually sell the mini blade uh, fuse thingos. So they look like this here. Um, and that's what I had to match. Otherwise, all I had lying around were the, uh, these big ones, these standard size ones. But, these are cheap enough, so I just bought a mix pack. Um, they got the 10 amp here, which uh, should hopefully just plug straight in. Um, so after that point, it's basically test it first and then solder it up. Okay, so I've now got a kind of different sort of problem where it seems like the signal from these remotes is just not strong enough. So even if I'm just standing like one meter back, it starts to lose connection. And certainly by the time I'm sitting in the driver's seat with a few layers in between, it doesn't work at all. So that's kind of annoying. Okay, uh, well, unfortunately, I thought this was going to be a nice easy afternoon, but it doesn't look like that's going to work. So even with the controller sitting right here, coming through here, if I'm sitting just in here, you can hear, I don't know if you'll be able to hear that, it's like very intermittent. Like it's getting signal, but not getting signal. So like certainly if I was sitting here like this, and I've got the remote down under there, it's got nothing. I'd have to point it back this way and still got nothing. That's nothing. That's how close I am and I'm getting nothing. So I don't know if this unit's faulty, the remotes are faulty or what's going on, but uh, that is a pretty poor remote control, remote control system. Okay, so we're back and a quick update to uh, the whole controller and the Varix controller uh, situation. I think I've got it working enough that I can solder everything up and try and hard install it. But basically, let me show you what I've done. Uh, so I don't know if I showed you guys the inside of this unit, but it had this uh, little antenna thing all coiled up inside. So there's a little hole here that's pretty drilled and it's almost like it was made to be because you pull it out and you extend the antenna out. And then even better than that, because um, I was still having problems even with it extended out like that, I've now got another piece of wire, which I'm going to solder on there, and I was running it through the car, and I'll feed around here, I'll make this all look nice and neat, and I'll have it up here and finish it up here somewhere in the footwell, but basically it meant that I was sitting in the car and I could literally just aim at my feet, and it was controlling the valve on the muffler, uh, which is exactly what I want. So. Um, Bit of a compromise because I know I did say that I didn't want any cabling inside the car but a small antenna cable is probably fine um, and this way I don't have to take apart the front dash to try and access uh, the 12 volt power somewhere under the dash so it's nice and easy here the controller and all of the power cabling is all in the boot and then the antenna cable uh, just runs through the car so I'm now going to solder this all up and then test it once more to see that it all still works and then it should be ready to go for the rest of the exhaust systems get installed and plugged in and should be good to go.
Okay, so it's all soldered in, it's all plugged in, uh, and it's all ready to go. I can just give you a quick test. Uh, so if I just leave this here, and I will go now, this antenna, there's an antenna that runs all the way through to the car. I'm going to go hop in the driver's seat, and I'll show you that it still works from inside the car. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that outcome. Um, I'm just going to tidy up all the cabling a little bit to get it all neat and nice and probably figure out where I'm going to mount the actual box and then tidy up the antenna inside the car and then it's literally just ready for the exhaust shop to uh, weld up the exhaust and then plug it in and it's all good to go. Okay, so we are back and it's all done. The car has been in the shop and it's had the exhaust all welded up, put together and it's all plugged in and ready to go. Um, so I'm just out the back here, uh, it's been sitting overnight so it's, the engine is cold and I'll give you a cold start in a bit. Uh, yes, that's the Sora back there, it is on jack stands, yes it's broken, uh, but that's going to be in another video. So to talk a little bit about the exhaust, it hasn't gone exactly as I had planned, I will admit. Um, it's not exactly what I thought I was going to get. So there's kind of two issues at play here and I'll just go through the first one right now. Okay, so we're just under the car here and you can see the exhaust runs all the way back. Uh, to the barracks at the back there. Um, now I had asked for a straight three inch pipe the entire way um, but when I got the car as you can see here they put like a, a little middle muffler in which is if it'll focus there it is um, so I didn't ask for this muffler I didn't pay for it uh, but it's there uh, which is a little annoying but it actually saved me a bit of money in the end and I'll get to that in the next point. Uh, so that was kind of the first issue which was a little disappointing because it means when the valve is open it's not truly a straight pipe, it does have a little bit of a muffle uh, in the middle there, um, but not the end of the world, in fact it actually helped me because of the second problem. Okay so you can see the barracks I've got here on the back, um, so like I said before it's a 3 inch in, 3 inch out, and this is the only muffler from barracks that's offset which is what I require to uh, line up with the exhaust cutout here. Um, the issue is these offset mufflers from barracks are not actually designed to reduce the volume. Um, they've been designed specifically for V8 cars and they've been designed to, when they're closed, reduce the rumble. Um, as a result of that, there's almost no difference between open and closed. So the only real difference on this car, which is not a V8, is a little bit of the boominess is gone. and a little bit of that straight pipe harshness is gone when it's closed, but the overall volume is the same. Um, so that's why I was saying the first problem with the middle muffler actually ended up helping because the overall volume of the car is not that loud anymore, um, which if it wasn't there and because the muffler doesn't actually reduce the volume, it would have been insanely loud, which is not what I want for you know driving to work and all of that. Um, and at the moment with the valve open, it does actually sound nice. It's not as loud as I, was, I would like it to be, but it does sound nice. Um, so without further ado, let me show you the cold start and then I'll drive somewhere else and I'll show you guys the uh, revving clips.
Okay, uh, so there you have it. Um, sounds pretty good. It's not, like I said, it's not as loud as I'd like, but I'm still pretty happy with that. Um, so eventually I probably will change it. Um, I can change the rear barracks muffler to a round one, uh, which it's gonna sit a bit lower, which I'll have to take some measurements to make sure I'm not too low, um, that I'm gonna scrape on stuff once I dump the car on coils later this year. Um, but for now, it's fine. Um, driving to work with the valve closed, it just makes it that little bit less harsh, uh, which is a bit more pleasant on the ears uh, so early in the morning. Um, so that's basically it for this video. Um, oh, one other thing I will change actually, um, the Varix remote control system. It's, it's garbage basically. Um, it's so intermittent, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So uh, I will hardwire in a rocker switch to open and close the uh, valve because it's just a, uh, 12 volt signal reverse polarity to open and close um, so anyway that's it for this video uh, I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope anyone watching this will understand that that particular varix on the car is not to reduce the volume so don't get it if that's what you're wanting um, and anyway I'll see you guys in the next video which may be fixing the Zora